All right, welcome everybody. We've got another edition of the Pros Talk Doc brought to you by the Ontario Approved Professionals. I've got somebody who's grown in to be uh, kind of my go-to to brainstorm off of with everything construction and uh, blossomed into a good friend and we spend... A little more than five minutes every time we talk. A little more than five minutes. <laughs> Just a, a hair. So this will be, I was excited this morning about this episode. So, and we were talking before we went on the air. This is going to be like rabbit hole episode yeah. 101. We're going to try and keep it, try and keep it focused. <laughs> try and keep it, yeah, it's going to be tight. Warding each other beforehand to say, okay, well, we got to stop. Pull it back, pull it back. <laughs> so with me, the one, the only, Theo Graham from Songwood Contracting in Gananoque, sir. How you doing? I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me. This I'm is, glad, uh, like I say, I'm glad you stepped up it is it is yeah. so whole point of the podcast i mean everyone's been hearing me say it we kind of as much as we want to we want to showcase songwood and everything great with that sure. it's also about the guy behind the business and the team behind the business you've got a growing team so just lead us in a little bit tell us a little bit about theo the man the myth the legend and a little bit about the team and then we'll dive into songwood okay uh, so Theo, uh, I, I was trying to rehearse this on the way here. I wanted to go into like, you know, just a small town girl living in a lonely <laughs> world, uh, staring Theo? in the rear view yeah. mirror, locking uh, eyes. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm oh, gosh, where do I start? So, so in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah. uh, so I spent my life in construction. Uh, I sort of dabbled in and out of, uh, working in the, uh, working from a, a father who built an R2000 home back yep. in the eighties, uh, grew up loving, uh, uh, energy efficiency, loving building envelopes, loving good design. Um, again, dabbled with different things in school. I, I was in and out of different multimedia of uh, uh, you know educational paths, and then I ended up in uh, in uh, civil engineering uh, background, and then and then tied that into uh, sort of dovetail that into into building. And so uh, it's been sort of a progress of events. But the company didn't uh, start just three years ago, so thirty. So it was 31. So it was really kind of a, again, it was sort of a late in the game to, to get into it. Uh, but yeah, here we are. And I describe you that way to some people and, and with utmost respect. And I think I say it to you every time we talk is, you know, you impress me each time. And it's one of those things that I am always going to commend a young entrepreneur because I deem myself old at 43. Old, army, old entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, old yeah. because there's this young blood <clears throat> coming up behind me chasing sure, my ass. Sure, sure, sure. But I mean... These people, the old 80s day, like your old man when he did the R2000 type home, if it was a business, they were probably pretty level and stagnant. Mm -hmm. There was no evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't be in business today without evolution. And you, sir, I think rival me when we talk. And that's why I think it's so long and winded is sure, sure, sure. the freaking evolution just from talking to somebody gets you fired up and you want to do change. Totally. We'll, we'll touch on that. We'll talk about some of the technology. It is, it is true. It's like, so, so my, if I was to recap, uh, my last, uh, 27 jobs, I counted them just cause you know, I knew you it was, would, it was fun to do that. <laughs> uh, cause of the, I, you know, I get, I know a lot of useless shit. I know a lot of stuff from other, uh, you know, trades and other lines of work that I wouldn't necessarily know if maybe I delved right into carpentry or right into uh, a contracting business at 18 or 20. Um, not saying you can't do that because I know a lot of smart guys that have now got a decade on me in the yeah. industry. Uh, but I do come from uh, looking back now, what I'd like to say is a pretty well rounded background, which gives me a lot of useless knowledge and a lot of different trades, but that gives me a chance to uh, touch on customer service or touch on things. I, I spend years behind a bar serving drinks. Um, I spend years at a computer doing AutoCAD. So I have a lot of respect for other um, businesses and other other trades and I think that gives me an edge where when I'm talking to uh, a designer I can watch you fly around on your keyboard yeah, which you can, have done you know and I can talk and I can see a client who's maybe uh, they own a bar or maybe they do they work in an engineering firm it's like I have some respect for that because I sat in that seat for a while and I think that gives me an edge where I did spend some time there so I think that's a nice um, uh, sort of like yeah ties it all together when I'm not just a builder and I have no idea about the outside world I've, I've sat in some different seats and that feels good and so I'm on the fence on this one. I don't think I've ever had this talk with you is so th you in your daily life, let's take you outside of Songwood contracting for a second. I, w I would guess you're not a confident person. Do you have self a lot of self doubt? Tons all the time. See, and I knew it. I was talking to my wife and I'm like, he's the same as me. I get anxiety and I'm ill and I'm nervous. And beforehand I, it kind of confirmed it cause you were asking mm -hmm. a lot of questions and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. You know, but isn't that crazy that 
you know, think of the people listening that are like, oh, those two guys are not high confidence levels or have a lot of self doubt or question themselves and have that, I almost a sponge for knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But meanwhile, if we sit here and talk about our profession, you're going to sound just as intelligent as sure. I am. And we are two leaders in yeah. our fields. Yeah, it, it comes it comes with, um, I, I'm going to quote my brother who's a musician. And I uh, so we, we play in a family band pre-COVID. Yeah. We'd all get around and, and I, I sit behind the drum kit. So I'm a drummer. And there comes times where you get into riffing. You get into freestyling, a little bit of yeah. jazz, not really jazz, but like in the jazz Everything world, comes from jazz. It comes from jazz. It's like yeah. you get into riffing. You get into like he's on a solo for a little many, too, a few too many bars. And, and you can look weak and you can look like you're looking around and you can look like you're kind of faking it um the term strong and wrong yep comes to mind so so if you look the part and you play the part then you usually got the part so it's not fake it till you make it it's fake it so you'll make it yeah uh so so strong and wrong is like there's a lot of stuff that we tackle um that we haven't done before don't know how to do but know to get the answers and know where to go to to get the answers and we come out on top but it's it's it's, it's you're right there's a lot of stuff that if i just stayed within my comfort zone if we only ever you did get the nothing stuff, done if we only ever did stuff that we knew how to do we would never grow we would never like if you never you know you'd never buy new machinery you'd never well yep. you have to kind of get it to then to then get it well that's so, that stagnant part that i was talking yeah. about so if we don't ever if we always you know so yeah there's always that little bit of confidence like wavering you're like oh shit here we go and so yeah you always commit uh and it's like you know over commit and then deliver don't over commit and then under deliver is like is rise to the rise to the occasion which is cool again i told you a hundred times i mean for your age and level of business like how many years you've been in uh, compared to myself, compared to even people my elder that I respect to, uh, it's it's always hats off and comforting. But I'm glad to hear that you're able to say yes. You're right, yeah. Dave. I am unconfident yeah. because so am I. But more and more people have to say this and just you know grab the balls by the wall and go, like yeah. try it. And yeah. and you're you're one. I'll I'll say like to your clients, to your team. I mean, you've never been fearful to ask a stupid question mm -hmm. but at least you're asking the damn questions like as a, as a right. designer a builder that just doesn't like if i get a builder scenario a a builder takes my plans and never calls me and the project's done <laughs> right i'm nervous you're as like, fuck oh, cl oh clearly the yeah the like, over, over, yeah. like i'm really that good i put a spelling mistake in there so yeah, they would call yeah. me i put one never, window upside down he no. never called me <laughs> Interesting. but then you we do our we do our client meetings together yeah uh, for the most part, you have uh, pre-release questions, after-release questions, yep. site inspection adjustments, yep. but then you keep me posted throughout yep. if there is any question. Yep. People have to realize that's not something you should, you know, oh, that's not a check mark for Songwood Contracting. <clears throat> that's a huge check mark right. corresponding with the guy that sees it in here, right. in my head, right. and you're supposed to just hammer it out. It's yeah. it. No, there should be, there yeah. should never the be no questions. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. <laughs> the dialogue. And that's, again, that goes back to, um, again, what I would consider an edge is like I spent years um, drafting for WSP, engineering firm. I was in, oh, yeah. in Halifax. Oh, yeah, big one. A, yeah, so we were in we were in an office of 90, uh, and I was a, I was a cat Damn tech. engineers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fucking engineers. Uh, no, good good guys over, uh, over on the East Coast, and I was there. Uh, I was just, uh, you know, double screens, just, you know, all the short keys in the world. And we were building everything from uh, uh, from roads to access uh, turbine, yep. uh, like you know, road access. So we were doing truck turning with 18 wheelers, yep. air pinning up uphills. Uh, we were doing um, grading plans and elevations for um, for gas stations. I had a lot of background in that. And so I was I was turning out those uh, drawings and we had I had the engineer's stamp. Like cool. we had, we had, we could go into the portal and like dump engineer stamps. So it was like the back and forth. Hey, does this approve? He's like, yeah, just fix these and pass it on. So, so getting into that, the minutia, the granular details of not having lines overlap and not having leaders touch other words and all that stuff like that. So I became Hawkeyes on engineer drawings. Fast forward 10 years. Now that I'm building, I look at these drawings. I know a good set of plans when I might not have had that training if I wasn't. Yeah, we were in a Zoom call a couple of weeks ago and you <clears throat> and I think I was doing changes live for clients, which that's killing my industry for Zoom to see it. But I know you got all hot and heavy. Yeah, it was Because you it was got to sexy. see it. And it's like, like the client meeting this? stops you and you're like, yeah, you yeah you're like, 
wait a minute, do you have everything perfectly offset in control? Absolutely. And you're like, oh, and the this is awesome. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, the client's like, what are these two? Like, are they having a moment? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we yeah. were. <laughs> yeah, we were. It was a small geek out moment. But it was in. Like, I, I think that having that gives, I hope, gives me a little bit of street cred. That I've, it does. I, I've, 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 I've dabbled in that world. I know AutoCAD. I know how tricky something can be. And I know when something isn't dire to, I don't need to call you for a change. But, yo, this should be, you know, the as built need, yeah. need to say this. So it's, it gives me, uh, yeah, I feel good about having that. Having had done that, I don't, I, I needed to build with my hands. I was, it was one year of sitting at a desk. Worst year of my life. Uh, I, I needed to get it, but I'm 21 a- <laughs> years. Woo, woo. I just yeah. needed to, I just needed to get it. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. Full, like, You're a full, creator. Full blown ADHD, yeah. undiagnosed. I just, I <laughs> self diagnosed. <laughs> I gotta be out. I gotta be out. I gotta build. I gotta see it. I gotta touch. Yeah. I gotta feel it. All right. Well, that's, 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 I mean, and I'm not surprised that does summarize you pretty good. And, and I do Thanks, mean, great. It's been a, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll and cut. And get yeah. Scene. Uh, the, the team behind you, I mean, that's another facet oh, that's been pretty impressive because you're, you're really being specific on who you're, you're kind of bringing in and what facet can it improve within Songwood rather mm-hmm. than I just need somebody to pick up lumber. Right. So can you dive? Because how many do you have now? Uh, uh, Liam starts new. We had just hired a co-op student. Co-op student turned full time. Uh, so now we're, we're seven uh, in the field and then two, uh, six in the field and then two support myself and Erica in the office. So there's yeah, eight, like, eight now. Like eight people in Gananoque Way for a that's building. Half the, that's half the population. It's half the, well, it's half the contracting neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, Gananoque Way, uh, Riverfront, uh, I would say a seasonal town. Yep. Uh, hands Heavy down. Heavy tourists. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's a tourism community on the river that's driven by seasonal yeah. wealth. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, I know of maybe three full-time building companies that are in there. The rest mm-hmm. would be saturated from Brockville and sure. Kingston. Sure. Um, but to have somebody your age, uh, your knowledge and striving with that number of employees is what I'm getting at. That's mm-hmm. an anomaly. Yeah. Yeah. You should not be able to maintain eight employees in a contracting <laughs> business in a community that's not even a major city in the county. Right. Right. We call them team, Dave. Uh, <laughs> to correct you. Uh, no, about, about that is like, I view it, I view it just as such as I view the, uh, I think it was two two throwaway statements. One is uh, uh, slow to hire, quick to fire. Yep. So taking our time to really handpick the people that want to that be methodical part of this. approach. Uh, yeah, and really taking our time that um, you know it's a dating game. You got to like me, and I got to like you. You got to. I say in. that to every client. Yeah, yeah. yeah They're totally. always like, "Why do we need a meeting first? And I was like, "Well, I have to see if you like me, but I also have to like you." Yeah, because like we're getting into bed together for a exactly. Long time. Like we got to make sure this is going to work. Um, so the uh, yeah the slow to slow to hire, quick to fire, and uh, and and I forget the other one now anyway that's gonna happen uh, folks yeah but uh <laughs> but it's it's just it's nice because i i want to, oh yeah the, the other one was um uh if anything goes well it's because of your team and if anything goes wrong it's because of you because of you yeah uh because um the it is it is everything we turn out every every finish every choice every product everything every execution every nice detail every cove molding every nice miter every clean joint every whatever you know whatever we're turning out is is at the hands of the guys i, I sit in an office i'm organizing i'm organizing uh, you know the 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 sheep and the the mites and the rats whatever you want to call it, the, the the wholesalers the material we call it team uh, yeah, so, yeah <laughs> of course of course yeah it's like it's wholesalers it's material chasing it's paying invoices yeah. it's chasing after subs it's clapping your hands it's snapping your wrists you know we have a great um designer in our corner we've got a great architectural designer and, and, a, and a firm that backs us in that avenue but it's the team that's delivering delivering the yeah. product. So it it is the team that's turning out the actual results and then we're just their support system. It's our job to make sure that they are successful. Um and so uh and so that's how uh yeah, so having them is like yeah, they they're they're everything. It's not it's not it's crazy that in 3 years it was me on the tools swinging it the was, hammer doing yeah. that stuff and then since then it's like I haven't picked up a fucking hammer Dave in like I've m- got a know, buddy who owns I hung uh, a picture for my wife, but that's a, like but <laughs> it was that's wrong. It. and it was right it was not loud. She's like, "Can you get the guys can you here?" Get the guys like, "Yeah, like you're not allowed to work in our house anymore." It's only got to be the team. I got a buddy that owns Stone City Woodworking in Kingston. So a little shout out to Rob. But Rob, he, yeah. He he posted a, an Instagram video. It had to be Friday because I think I was here razzing him. And he was splitting a plank on a tool. 
and uh, right away I'm texting the him. The bandsaw? Yeah, yeah the bandsaw. He's that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the first time you've seen him using a tool in months. Yeah. So I text him right away. I was like, so what was dustier, the wood or you? <laughs> <laughs> he called me right away, and he's like, Screw he's you. like, it's been like three months. So the exact same thing. Is, 100%. But me, like when I take a holiday, like I normally take a week camping holiday yeah. every year. That's all I take. Good. Um, I, I'm itching to get back on the keyboard. Right. I'm I'm itching. I to get don't back. know short keys anymore. Right, but it's gone. our craft to not be sure. on the tools sure. Sure, uh, sure, has sure. got to get to you. So, no, that's awesome, and I agree. I mean, the team is everything, and you guys struggling to keep even in today's challenges, time frames and material shipping, and and keeping that family, that cohort, mm. uh, employed. Yeah, it does. Like it, that's a struggle too. Yeah, it's it is. It's got its stresses. Like it's got its. Uh, you know, it's tough uh, knowing that. Yeah, I, I feel 100% responsible for not just, you know, six or seven people, but then their respective, their better halves. So yeah, I say it here. People are like, 14. how many do you have as a staff? And I'm like, well, am I counting wives and kids? Because yeah, cause it fe- yeah, cause I feed them all. Yeah, because it fe- yeah, it's, it's terrifying that you're, uh, that, yeah, it's not it's not a boast. It's not a brag. It's like, it just shows you how serious I take this job. But and it's just like, yeah. it's like, it's, you know, okay, which case it's like 14. Well, kids, well, shit, it's like, it's, it's 20. It's it's whatever. It's like, yeah, that's 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 pretty cool um, that, that we get, uh, that they've chosen us to, to be part of that. And it's uh, no, it's a really good so far. It's yeah, it's yeah. great. So Songwood, uh, what's you know Songwood contracting? What's kind of the you know in a nutshell the general scope of what you are looking to do for Gan and surrounding area? Totally. So we sort of we identify as a builder remodeler. So our bread and butter has morphed over the years. Obviously, we started off like anyone. You're just picking up every job you can get. Yeah, it was like so you, decks and sun porches. Yeah, like we, we were just like, we were just like, we were putting in doors and windows for people. We were doing hardwood. We were putting in kitchens. We were hanging doors. We were doing anything finishes, anything interior, pretty much anything exterior. We were just taking every job we could get because it, that mentality when you start is like, I don't know when the next check's coming. I yeah. don't know when the phone's going to ring next. Um, which is hilarious to think now, but here we are. Uh, it's like, you really are like, you're just, you're just taking absolutely everything. We hung, we've hung pictures for people. Like it was just like, that was the, 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 you know, what, what paid the bills. It was just Sarah and I, Sarah was our first, um, team member to join. Yep. She's a signed apprentice. She's here out of Brockville. Um, and she's, uh, and she's been with us for two and a half years since, since the first six months of inception and, uh, and, and, and how that sort of morphed into phone calls for, Hey, could you, could you build me a deck? And it was like, Yes, I can build you a deck. Yeah, I, I haven't built a deck before. Yeah, but I yeah. can build you a deck. Like I know I can because yeah. I've always worked for. Can other I put companies. my handprint in the concrete? Yeah, exactly. Like one. I've always worked for guys that built yeah. decks, and I was always the laborer or the lackey or yeah. the runner or whatever. So it's like, no, I knew the components, I knew how to do it. But like, but someone's got to take a chance on you the first time of everything. There was once upon a time. There was actually the first a little known, time, little known statement on that that. You know, somebody's got to take a chance on you the first time. Uh, my old man used to tell me, you know, we had a lot of talks, you know, probably in the last two years of his life. But, you know, do you know who the first person to take a chance on you is supposed to be? You. Right. Ooh. Have the balls to jump. That's deep, ladies and gentlemen. That's deep. That's that deep is right deep. There. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. Was a- but so you, there was one one drawing you stamped the first time. Yeah. Right. Did they know that that it was you? It doesn't really matter. Do you know that it was them? It was the first time. It doesn't really matter. But But someone trusted you someone yep. believed in you someone wanted to to put that in you so so we did our first deck and then we did our first garage and then we did our first remodel and we did our first exterior signing we did our first exterior insulation job so it's just it just starts to snowball and then and then we landed um year two we landed a full interior exterior remodel the big one the big one uh forever to be known as windsor drive yeah. um and uh, and yeah that was our first real crack at a full home remodel so and you a, were there a long time we were like there. you guys you flipped that thing on its head and then put it upright again yeah exactly yeah it was uh it was it's basically i think it's about five thousand square feet 4500 square feet of interior space with with two unexecuted it's about seven thousand square feet of interior Massive. uh and then uh, again again about 4800 exterior 52 windows and doors exterior insulation all new siding um, every opening got removed and replaced all the old stuff off. There was a swimming pool that got removed. A sunroom got infilled, uh, 1200 square foot, uh, deck that got put on a staircase down to the water. There's 102 steps and 17 landings down to the, down to the water that got put in all new HVAC, all new plumbing right from the curb. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty wild to, to look back at that. But again, someone 
we did this. Talk about yeah. uh, I like well, you. No, I like you, and key. they like that. It's like it was. We really we we jived. We bound, We you know we 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 worked well with the client. We, we could t- talk the same language, and it was probably again we'd we'd ramped up with some more bodies at that time. But I think at the at the like peak we were staff? yeah. So we yeah. just brought in some temporary guys. There was a lot of demo, a lot of removal. So with uh, so we were probably eight or ten plus two or three subs on site at all times on one job on one job so i'm 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 on site most days at least half a day and then in the office uh and we were there for almost uh, i think it was eight or almost 10 months and we're still uh like going back more well more that's stuff. So that, some more that's, finishes that's and, not a bad thing that's a testament because if yeah. somebody's willing to have you come in and you know put lipstick on the pig you built uh that's that's still a compliment because yeah. that means everything went smooth yeah i think we started like yeah we started in the spring and we finished like the following yeah so it was i think we started in like june or july we finished the following april like april 15th was our little anniversary it was a year one year anniversary with them um and then uh, and then yeah we we're back to doing more landscaping more fence work more stairs and stuff like that so yeah so that was like once we had that fuck we thought we could build anything because we just we got to cut our teeth on so much stuff as a team it's huge uh, and so it was really it was really really nice and we used that as a demo we take clients yeah. to show them uh the big you know you shot the shit out of it like, yeah you, exactly you like if i have aerials yeah. we have interior 360s we really pushed that because they let us take it we call it um outcome based yes so it was really um we were really flexible with being able to take it they had a vision that we needed to achieve we weren't constrained by a hard limit on a budget per square foot or a by room basis. It was, this is what we need to see out of this place, full yeah. stop. And we're like, shit, absolutely, yes. And so we, we felt really responsible for that. We felt like we needed to take that and, and put our hanger hat on it. So so we really took that to, uh, to heart and we delivered. Uh, I find uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially young ones, out of the gates, miss those opportunities. And I think that one, the Windsor Drive project, will always be your that one project because you know if people live in fear they they will never achieve and that could have that would have terrified even today builders like sure. 20 year veterans right. to take on you know like you say 4 to 7000 square feet of renovation mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. uh and commit a year some people even look at that and they're like oh well I can build five homes in a year and I'll make less money but it's easier yeah, you know, Produ- yeah, production builders that yeah. brag about building a house exactly. in sixty days. And it's yeah, like, is that the goal? Is yeah, that you we're going can't. To? Yeah, you can't use that to market yourself because right. it's crap. Right. So, but what I'm saying is, most young entrepreneurs would have feared that and walked away and sure. got over their head. Sure. For you to tackle that, I think you're right. That's going to be the one that molds you and gives you that extra confidence to go yeah. forward. So since so since that one, that's that's uh, the 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 bread and butter. After that, the following year was big into decks. Last year was big yeah. into decks and garages, and then this year we're seeing a big shift into more remodeling, uh, a lot of interior remodeling. So full so full gut full gut remodeling is now more of our bread and butter. Um, and then we've already had requests for for some new builds which again someone's got to someone's got to be the first one right so we've now done we've ramped up to is that smart though like for what i'll challenge you now sure is it smart to get into new builds um you're talking a whole new beast uh custom homes why why not talk because tell me your because you're an expert renovator so why would you go into new builds i hear you and gannon is probably rivals brockville on heritage Nobody's building a lot of new ones. You've got one major subdivision to the uh, north. Probably because like, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> well, I understand and I might, trying and I to do one, back. but yeah. would it not be one you cut your teeth on for you and the family instead? Um, could be, could be, uh, your company, I'm just speaking devil's yeah, yeah, advocate No, no, here. it's good. It's good. Yeah. So, so we've talked about that. Our, our long game is now that I've seen how shitty houses are built. Yes. I will probably yeah. build my own place eventually or extensively remodel an old home or gut. Yeah. Whichever like, one, whichever one, again, yeah. like I think there's a certain amount of sustainability that comes with building new versus all these old farmhouses. I'll tell you, you we were talking about TJ Smith, TJ Smith, Smith. Uh, him and I are yin and yang. That guy is a heritage. He always wants to own a heritage home, and right. it requires upkeep constantly. Mm-hmm. I no. hope I hope to not own. I hope to not own a capital H heritage. Yeah. I hope to like lowercase h yeah. heritage. None <laughs> of this like I actually don't want you know the classification of heritage because yeah. that just no no no. But he's like he's having got... a home that has some heritage features. Absolutely. There's you know I have a I have a dream of of uh, you know owning a limestone property and then folding the inside into it rebuilding it the way I want to spray foaming it, air tightness, you know, high performance measures, and then a nice sexy addition at the back. Like there's an, and you know, nice distance from the road. Unfortunately, all these things don't exist because old homes 
aren't far back from the road because you want to unless you find the original farmhouse yeah and you know they wanted them close to the horse and buggy path like it's just harder so it's like so unless something doesn't fit the bill then yeah probably a new build as far as the remodeling versus new um we're gonna go with what a a client sees a value in us i mean if if someone's reaching out to us because they've drank the kool-aid they've seen our instagram they see what we're all about they see what you know how we've introduced the team what we've stacked ourselves with with carpenters and, and 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 finished guys is like I'm hoping that, yeah, regardless of uh, of remodel or new, I hope we're attracting a client. I hope we're attracting a client that aligns with our vision. Whether it yeah, be I don't think there's fear as in a, that. As simple as a deck or all the way to a new build. Again, I w- we will never be a production builder. We will never be going for numbers. It will always be an outcome-based finish. And that's my job to make sure that I'm aligning with the clients that want the same no, I think outcome. that's a fair statement. And like I say, I was just playing devil's advocate because sometimes I see, obviously I see a lot of builders. Uh, this is my 21st year in the profession. God, Dave, say it again. I know, 21 years. <laughs> Challenge accepted. But but it's I've seen them come and go. Sure. And, some, and like, you, as much as we were saying stay your lane is... Would you say the new build is a, is a death of some? Yeah. Okay. 100% because, okay. okay, so let's say you've bitten the whistle and all of a sudden, because again, think Kingston, uh, Kingston, Ottawa, Cornwall, and Toronto are growing this way, man. Right. So, right. so you're saying, why you want to compete it? against Tamarack? Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You think I you can beat their pricing? I see what you're saying. They'd lose no, just never, to kill I'll you. Ne- yeah, well, I'll ne- yeah. But first you know of, what I first mean. First of all, we have no competition. Right. That's the that's my approach. Uh, yeah. Is that we again? Oh, are, you don't are, have competition, but clients are cheap. Yeah. Well, yes. So and when we Tamarack shows them a price that's unrealistic, go for it, and then All you lose long. the job. So go, that's what I mean. You go for staying it. your lane. We will never we will never lose a job. We will only misalign with a client's wishes. Uh, that's a good one. But Tamarack will never <laughs> want to flip and renovate a house ever. Sure. Right. So you're just saying again, stay in your lane because it's attract. Like stay in your yeah. lane because there's less there's yeah. less fish in that pond. Yeah, if you're well, good, if you're good in that pond, if you're sexy in that pond, I wasn't saying sexy. stay in your lane. I was just saying, you could. Say is it a wise I hear choice? I hear you. It's fair. It's Me, good. I get asked all the time, like, when am I going to expand and hire an engineer and go into commercial? And you're like, no, nope. t- no touch. Why? I do 1,200 homes a year. Yeah. Why would I? T- wh- why would when? I touch? Why would I? Touch? When? <laughs> With what? Time? Yeah, yeah. What time? Ta- what yeah. hours? Yeah. In sorry, what folks. Day? Podcast is canceled. Dave actually has to work on Mondays. Hey. <laughs> But no, it's it's really those venues because I'm the same way. I'll do a ten by ten deck. People can call. I'll I'll sure. design a deck. Right. But I'm also doing custom homes. Yeah. But I mean, beyond that, there's I guarantee there's lots more money. But it's not comfortable. That's it's not, not yeah. passionate. It's not yeah. the service I could provide. Yeah. Um. You know, we dabble in certain ones, but I think the same mentality yeah, totally. that no. you said, where it's a client that I've done a house for, is saying, "Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Can you do this?" Absolutely. Yeah. I can't personally, but I can yeah. facilitate and stay bring my the, brand. Yeah. Stay with to the devil it. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in the club. So, no, I'm just curious yeah. if no, it's, it's good. That's it's, a good. Because uh... I've known uh, two builders that were pretty prominent in Gananoque and uh, don't exist anymore. We'll talk about them later. But you know what I mean? You've had, well, I mean, he does, the one doesn't exist because he got older and got out of it. But I mean, do we with, you know, Gan, uh, I did phase one, two, and three with them. Those are all Animal Designs homes. Right. All up Garfield Street, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Because um, they're gorgeous. Yeah, this is not the Theo show. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> holy, I'm just realizing But then uh, Tree Hill Estates, I did that one, and sure. it's pretty much, I think, just sitting there, right? They right. didn't even get into phase two. So A, makes me nervous for builders in Gananoque. B, makes me nervous that there's no sustainability for builders in Gananoque if you have two vacant lands with subdivision agreements sitting there not being developed. Well, let's which let's tells talk. me it's renovation. Yeah. Well, let's uh, well let's talk about how shitty some of these businesses are run. We can talk about finances. Well, no. About let's, how, let's well let's no because one let's of your dovetail, things is, let's dovetail that into the next conversation. Dive about, in. About go. How to run a company? No, because uh, again, Theo impresses me. I mean, you and I, as much as we talk about clients, we end up off the topic talking about efficiencies, programs. Uh, how much money we spend on coaches? Zero. <laughs> and um, <laughs> no, but if you're not getting you're better, fine. You're getting, yeah, that's right. But you're fine tuning. Like sure. I say, and I'm a fan of it. We did a tour of my office when you got here, cause first time here, and you're seeing all those systems and how files move yeah, you through. Gotta, and you gotta, you gotta have systems. I think we're both the same way, where we get like revved up and excited yeah. to hear that. 
And because I thought I was the only one doing it, you're probably mm-hmm. thinking the same thing. Yeah. You thought you're the only one with all these systems. So dive into mm-hmm. it. Like, tell me how important the systems and analytics are all for you. So, so most people, I, I go back to the old baker, the baker story. Uh, guy loves to cook. Guy loves to bake. Likes making cakes. Makes cakes all day long. Loves giving them to family and friends. Decides to open a bakery. Never cooks another day in his life. Yeah. Wonders why. Um, if you're a good baker, you should bake. Uh, if you're a good archi- architect, you should architect. No, wait. Uh, yeah. You know, if you're uh, if you, if you if you love what you do and you want to do that, you should do that. If you're a good it, renovator, you should renovate, not build a new home. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean doesn't mean you should run a business. Yeah, and that's the transition that we've seen is that a lot of these people are uh, again getting into owning a business or or a builder or any sort of every business deals with this. And but I I love running a business. Yeah. Actually, shocker! I don't know if you'll know this. I'm not a carpenter. Yeah, you told me that uh, last like, time we like, were talking. Like, like self, like I found self, out like, you sat in the office, which I didn't know, and that you're not a carpenter. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, it's like, so. So, so I know a lot of carpenters. Names won't be named. Right. I know a lot of carpenters that have no right running a business. Oh, and I, I lot, could, And I know a lot of businesses that are running that can't hang a sheet of drywall for their life. So how how's the marriage between the two? Um, the the Guys that support us, the team we have, our two lead um, supervisors on site are Red Seal certified Finnish carpenters. Yep. Internationally recognized Finnish guys. Which, again, I want to add, is very rare. You, yeah. there is no, this is not, there is no program short of the Ontario approved professionals, which background check and vet the fact that a builder. Has a red seal carpenter. You My dad have... was the only plumber out of like 60 plumbers in Brockville sure. paying for a master plumber's license that right. doesn't even get policed. Right. right. There's aren't, there aren't even plumbing inspectors anymore. Right. They're right. gone. It's like uh, OCOT or yeah. whoever. That's the only... And they're, and, they're, and they're falling apart. We could talk about OCOT for they are. hours. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting... So so the way we've stacked our cake, our parfait, our onion uh, is... is I love running a business. I love the numbers. I love dealing with clients. I love, uh, you know, taking their scrambled eggs and and bringing in a designer, an interior designer, bringing yeah. in you, bringing in me. We all smash our heads together, decipher what they're trying to achieve, and then and then we lay the cards out for the guys that that. So we're not like we're not a framing company. We're not yeah. a drywall company. We're a general contractor. So we take. We'll handle your entire project. We'll take your whole vision. We bring everybody to the table. I have the standards of quality that I will accept, which is why you've hired us. And then we lay out our guys um, to execute said tasks. And we bring that finish level to that outcome based rather than just because you could go 100%. You could go and hire a framing yeah. company. You could hire an insulation company. Like all the pieces. You could just pull the pieces together and you will not, like, you wonder, like, why does a job need a project manager? And it's like, try it. I yeah, there's some, or what is it, 30, like, 32 classifications of like 32 steps to a, a home build? Right. And it's uh, like if no one's yeah. there to make those jive and it's like, uh, you know, you put the wall up and the HVAC guy comes in and drills through the joist and then the plumber comes in and then the electrician shoves his wire right through the air vent. Like it's just, you see it every day. You see oh, it every day. Pex plumbing and drywallers. It's just like, you know, yeah. and so so if we can Match be, made in heaven. so we'll, the only <laughs> things we'll sub out, the only things we'll sub out once the build begins. So let's say we've got a design, yeah. we've got a stamp, we got permits, we got interior, everything's all laid out, selections are made. The only things that we'll sub out are uh, spray foam. Yep. Because that's a regulated biz. Uh, HVAC plumbing. We have electrical in house. Uh, yep. That was the thing I felt strongly about because it's a big enough scope. It's a long enough scope in the job. It's the next biggest and a after key framing. element. And a key element because, like, plumbing, you, you can plumb a house in two days. Yeah. You can HVAC an entire house in three days. Electrical is weeks. And, and those matter. Those switch locations, those, you know, we're doing. Um, appliance garages for this new kitchen under kind of like it's very to have that guy in your pocket was more important to me than than enveloping plumbing or hvac because they serve such a uh, an integral role but a smaller scope what in, are you saying about plumbers <laughs> we can talk about plumbers if you want no um, so it's one of those things when they get that, their shoes on they've done their best yeah but it's it's again i mean the whole site runs on power yeah and and it's a whole separate permit process yep which were, uh, and which it's were approved control, to, yeah. That's right, but it's all controlled and mandated by ESA. So to have that facet and that ability, because you uh, and your Red Seal Carpenters can handle everything, building code, framing, structure, all everything else, yeah. but 
I mean, you're not using, uh, you know, manual tools. You need power so you can get sub panels up. He's the, up. He's the first one on site and yeah. the last one off site. Yeah. He's the first one there. Usually we upgrade the power service. Step one is usually they're running on 60 amps or, or 100 amps or a 60 amp fused panel or 100 yeah. amp. It's just, you know, dusty and, and all that stuff. So we, our current client, we've upgraded from a 100 amp overhead to a 200 amp buried again, because we just wanted to give them some fresh air and not have this big triplex drooping across their lawn. So we usually always upgrade the service. Nine times out of 10, upgrade the service. So he's the first one there, cut the old system, leave it dead in the walls, ready for us to start a uh, demo. And he shows up full panel, inspected, pass approved, and 320 amp uh, receptacles for us, ready to start. So that you guys aren't on generators. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like that's step what I mean one. And that can happen key. weeks before we get there. Yeah. Uh, and that's already for our next plan. That's already been done. Footings have been for Charles Street. Yeah. Yeah. Already ready to go. And the whole house is dead, knob and tube, all that stuff. So the homeowner actually doing demo can, can, can go nuts. Um, and be safe. And be safe. Yeah. So so having that in house was important. And then and then so we'll show up. We'll do all the structural, all the framing, all the sheeting, um, all the floor, all the elevations, do all of our jacking and lifting of these old houses. There's a lot of structural work that goes into these places. Um, uh, weeks before we can, you know, really delve into like interior walls and stuff. And then like I said, spray foam, HVAC plumbing. And I think we sub out mudding and taping because the guy's got all the guns and he's, uh, he's quick and, and that efficient. And drywall sucks. And drywall. We, we, we board our own stuff. Uh, our, it's the only our, thing when I built my home. I was like, nope. Never again. Never no. again. No, well, I, I started and I was like, no, how much is this going to cost? Because whatever done. you say is, is not yes. Gonna, yeah. Uh, we it's, watch. It's it's shitty. The guys the guys are efficient at it now. The guys have. I mean, we if you're dealing with wood and you're sweating a sixteenth, you can you can bang up board. Right. Um. So the guys are pretty good at it. Uh. Our mutter, we're we're in bed with him. He he's he's really yeah. good with our guys, and he'll come in. He'll tell us how he wants the sheets run. He'll tell us where we're putting our joints, and he gives us the the the, the go ahead, and then we'll say, great, give us three days, we'll board the place, and he comes in right. See that us. again. That's that's a check mark for excellence as far as an architect listening to a builder, um, having. Your drywaller confirm that it's ready because i mean you can have the world's best mutter and taper right like starts, drywall starts with framing uh, oh, you, you, yeah. you, you've if heard it's the all wow like you've heard the adage big, go ahead you, well this is i think my father told me this one uh the uh the framer doesn't care because the drywall is going to cover it the drywall doesn't care the drywall doesn't care because the mutter is going to cover it the mutter doesn't care because the painter is going to cover it and the painter doesn't care because the furniture is going to cover it yeah uh, and, it's but we're if you're all of them yeah and you give a shit at the framing stage, and you give yeah. a shit at the boarding stage. The mutter thinks you're a saint. The paint, it's a dream. And then you get that, you get that, you get that outcome based. Mild man, he was a plumber for like forever. That's all he did. And uh, he used to joke. He told me two big things when I was getting into the construction. Uh, a, never have the same. Uh, sorry, never have multiple trades on the site at one time. We all hate each other. It's just they get in each other's way, right? Like you got your furnace, your HVAC, your plumber, and your electrician all trying to fit 12 foot lengths into a small hole. And guess what? They're all slobs and they all know they're slobs, but they clean up when they're done. Then number two, he said, the drywallers always hate plumbers. And that's, I think the first time he told me to bend over and he'd shove a two by four, you know where, and you'll find out why a three inch vent doesn't fit in a two by four wall because it's going to bow. Yeah. So having your, your drywaller come on and verify that you weren't a dumbass and put a three inch, you know, vent and yeah. the nice curve to the drywall yeah. happens. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, my old man, and then framers too, cause he said every, he says he wished framers would think about floor joist placement. Right. Cause I mean, it's set. Every toilet goes in the same spot. Yeah. And every time he cuts there's, your floor joist, every time there's a joist there, every he time. cuts it. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. And I'm like, that's so you put a 300 pound man taking a 300 yeah. pound dump on yeah. a toilet filled with water. Yeah. And there's no on joist, a cut joist. No, my favorite is bathtubs. <laughs> my favorite is bathtubs. Oh. Also seems to be a big one. Uh, now they've upsized to two inch now. And it's like three joists in a row, all compromised. You put, you know, again, the 300 pound tub. Then you put 600 pounds of water in it. Then the 300 pound guy in See, it. We're, I've uh, never seen another designer, and I'll challenge them because we do it. We call for double joists under the kitchen island and the tub or any major plumbing fixture. Love it. Because the tub, you do. How you fit it? our full bodies in yes. it, right? Then you fill the thing to the brim with water, which is one of the densest, heaviest <laughs> materials we can, in a tub that took three guys to lift in. Yeah, and then rubber duckies. Uh, all of all it. All of it on top. Well, our wives have 300. Yeah. It's like every condiment going it's for like the body. Every con- mustard, ketchup, <laughs> yeah. man. Every- but it's true. So, And all totally. it needs is, is a double rim against the wall and yeah. a double rim on the face. Yeah. 
That's it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It's uh you have you have to give a shit though, Dave. Yeah. And that's that's where this all sort of goes to shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> my tub's on the on the main level, which has a basement below it. And I dude. just tend not to want to fall to the basement. Yes. I'm a big dude. Yeah. You no, know? it's uh, it's. I don't want my yeah. rubber duckies dying. Uh, right. It's it's again that kind of stuff, that kind of forethought, that kind of joist placement, that kind of layout, all that stuff. When you get to control all that stuff, that's that. Talk about justifying the cost of a GC. That's it. Oh, is a framer. Yeah, how many times I've been to a friend's house and they've dropped the brand new hot tub on their deck that's twelve years old? Right. Yeah. That, you want to go in the hot tub? Nope. No. I'm good. I don't even I want to go on the hard, deck. I take a hard pass. Yeah, I'll stay on the grass. It's a and that and that's where that kind of forethought, that kind of like when we step into a house, we're already picturing our job is to picture the yeah. trim and the furniture and the usability and the access and the soundproofing and the comfortability. All that stuff is our job. If you just hire, you know, the individual components or you hire a framing company or just a regular generic builder, it's just like I don't know. There's, there's missing. It's missing that component, and that's that. You know. Do you find soundproofing is a topic that people are still ignoring? Because I do. Um, we we push it. I recommend it in every TV wall. We push it. We push it pretty every hard. Every hallway, uh, we, we give them. We give them. We give them a good, better, best. So we give them just the regular. Okay. So we give them the regular rock saw, uh, safe and sound. Um, you know, sound attenuation. You can't say soundproofing anymore. You gotta say sound Man, dampening and shit. But yeah, we say we say soundproofing as in we try to proof it, but it's not. It will not be soundproof. A joke, with, joke with the designers is you've got to keep the 1997 uh, and the 2012 uh, codes out until we get rid of all the 97 builders because some of them are still using terminology that the new guys don't know. Right. And it's only because soundproof was in 1997. That right. was a legitimate thing. Right. You can't but now it's not. Yeah, sound dampening. Now it's sound auditory. Atten- sound attenuation. Uh, regulation or yeah, something. Yeah, sound attenuation, all that stuff. So, so we'll give them a, the Roxol is like the base model. Yeah. Uh, Roxol Sonapan. Sonapan is a three quarter yep. inch thick re- recycled green fiber board that you buy at Home Depot, uh, about 30, 40 bucks a sheet. And you put it uh, basically underneath your joist. Yep. So you put your, you know, you put your uh, it's almost like sound. a sound, sound mat, eh? Yeah, but yeah. like the Donaconda, the same different, yeah. you know, different words for it. But uh, uh, it turns out one of our, uh, one of our team was uh, allergic to cedar chips and found that out when, oh, cutting, that's awesome. when cutting it. Uh, Get that dust fabrics pil- all the pils- way up. Pillsbury dope, just red, <laughs> swollen. I'm going home. Yeah, I'd say. Why? Uh, What's wrong? So, uh, so, so safe and sound, so on a pan, and then you can, and then strap, you can choose however many levels of strapping you want, whether you wood strapping, then the resilient channel, you can go regular half inch, yeah. you can go fire rated, and they actually make, um, like sound damping, yes. sound rip, drywall as well. Yeah, because so all it is choose, is vibration. You can right? just, you, as many times as you transfer mediums, the less vibrations work through that. So yeah. the more times you change, the better. So, so all of them is the best. We've done that in our, in our recent uh, current job. We've done the safe and sound, the sonar pan, strapping, resilient channel, and then half inch. And that's between the main living space, kitchen, party room, TV room, and the children's bedroom. So are you at a level yet? I am at this level. And here's a little tidbit for my clients. Like in that first meeting when I'm you know, talking bread and butter and getting to know you and you know, it's, we're on that first date mm-hmm. to, for a customer client. Um, I know if they're the the package A, B, or C right away. You sh- you should. That yeah. should be. It's your job. Uh, I don't know. We talk, we can talk about disc profiles and the sixteen person. No, but I just mean I know how like, far they're gonna go. Sure. Like, do they care about soundproofing, or is it worth me even having that conversation? I can gauge them now yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm seeing that they're they're driven by price, they're driven by love, they're driven by need, yeah. or they're building their final home and they give a damn. Yeah. I can really start we, to sense we that. We try and tap into that uh, the proverbial you know the limbic brain. We try and tap into that emotional side because. Of, on top of us just you know being the builder that they chose is also like i know this place looks like a dump right now i know this place is gutted right now but it's like can we sit and in, in lawn chairs in your living room and look and see what this what's what's the comfortability level here yeah. what are we, what are we going do for how do you live what are we yeah. actually going for here when you have the the kids over when the in-laws are here it, it is your bedroom above like you 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 play that role and you walk them through that and they start to they start to give a shit because they don't they weren't thinking well like you have that. to they, find those ways to put it in just context see, they just see the drywall yeah. they just see the ceiling They're like well, well what do you mean we're just going to do drywall you're like yes we're going to do drywall but and you sort of you sort of pull that out of them you pull those requests out of them and then they you you, you find that more people care they just didn't know and it's and it's it is our job to yeah to i tell people them. i'm a mind reader that's my job is to be a mind right. reader to paint a self-portrait that right. only you can see yes that's a very that's a very uh, psychological way it is. of it is, and that's it. Is I don't that. I'm not totally. going to live there, and I don't care. Yes, I don't. Yeah, 
uh, nice curtains, nice table, That's 500 fair. people, one person, don't care. Yeah. Cat, dog, don't care. Yeah. Uh, but it's my job to learn right. how you're going to care. Sure. And I yeah. find that builders apply that more, the better they'll do too, because at the end of the day, it'll be less demo, yeah. right? Less negative construction. Yeah. And cleaner yeah. positive and, and, to, and to me all the stuff that's behind the walls once we drywall um it's not changing i don't want to say <laughs> that i don't want to say we don't give a shit after drywall but like after drywall like now it's just now we're just following through the motions now we're just executing the floor you chose and the trim you chose exactly the you're in that the final stage when we're when we're at drywall there's pretty much no more decisions to make. we've picked your doorknobs we picked your doors everything everything's coming now now we're just into robotic assembly mode as fast you're as in that the last uh, you're in that hgtv mode where they say okay now you're not allowed back for 12 That's hours exactly which is the last it. three that minutes is, yeah exactly. and then it's bam it's yeah, done and it's done so that 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 stage of you're not allowed back in the house that's when the decisions are over because because all that soundproofing is done all the sweating of making sure that there's no bulkheads hiding stuff in walls we've been we've been very strategic in our most recent one of lining up walls bringing stacks down inside closets and inside the ceilings of other rooms like our client had a request of no bulkheads Full remodel, so we had to we had to choose where every every HVAC run went, uh, where every plumbing stack dropped, every water line, every receptacle. No bulkheads. Yeah. I do not want to see a bulkhead. I hate them. So it's like we did it. We did it though, and it's like a lot of. There's planning. no reason lot, you can't. No, it was just a, it was it was like it, obviously if we can, obviously there's like caveats and shit, but like uh, and so we no we there's hit, no reason we, you can't. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, it was it was good. We we did it. As a designer, it's one of our biggest pet peeves is these fucking bulkheads. Yeah. Like a lot of times when I go to a job and clients are like, oh, why did you put that? Why did the builder put that bulkhead? And it's because they're lazy. lazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we said it at the same time. It was the it's e- 100% it was lazy. The e- it was the easiest. Yeah. And or they had no control of their sub trade and right. all they did was cover or, it with mascara. Or it was price driven. Yeah. Oh, still. So, so there's fix, no reason. So, so we don't. So we give our clients a, a budget to work from and we know and most of our HVAC guys, HVAC plumbing. Um, and, uh, again, spray foam is very fixed because it's just, it's just board feet. There's just inches and squares. Fill this cavity with this this spray It's very easy. Mudding also. Yeah. It's the whole house. Like those are two very fixed price things. Um, HVAC, I let work hourly. I give them a budget. We know what that budget is. But because if I I needed them to move something three times, they'll move it and they don't complain no. because they're not on fixed price. No. Nope. Because if they were, they're like, ah, I, I fucking, yeah, I, I quoted pray, to I, move I, it I, once. I, I quoted to yeah. put that run right through the middle of your kitchen. At yeah, I we height. tell our clients the same thing. Is they're like, well, like we're a fixed price per se, but I've worked out a system. But a lot of them are like, well, how many revisions do I get? I'm like, That's well, easy. you get a thousand revisions, yeah. but it's my job to make sure it's only three. Otherwise, yeah. I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Yeah. If it's six, you fucked up. Exactly. It's my, yeah, I can't read your mind. Yeah. So and you're we're asked, not while you're doing that, while you're designing that, while you're drawing that for them, you're asking them the strategic questions that ping pong you between. Oh, you're, yeah. you're narrowing that, you know, Star my Wars corridor. She, you're narrowing that down to the point where you should land. Within ten or fifteen percent of the final yeah. drawings, you should land there pretty much the first time. To then your then the last adjustment is the last ten percent. You have one more for five percent, then one more for two percent, and then you're delivering. Yeah, yeah, it's 100%. a very systematic way to yeah. move them out. But a lot of times, like my wife, we've been 12, 13 years together now, and she says, like, I'm a master manipulator because I'm I'm learning how to word things and get the right questions at the right time to I think to, it's a master communicator. I no, think it's, it's a better- it is a manipulator because I'm I'm you don't like 90% of my clients have no idea what they want and right. they have no idea how to get to what they want. Sure. So I have set questions like in meeting 1 versus 3, I'll never ask the same question. Right. I know what questions I need to ask and when yes. and that yes. that gets me the answers yeah. to manipulator, manipulate you manipulator the sounds ominous but i yeah. i know what you, i know yeah. what you're saying is architectural like architectural manipulator <laughs> yeah that's better it's like no i have the same ones i i know that there's questions that i when i need to dump questions on the client yeah. there's more shit going on in my head when we're talking and doing yes. a walkthrough than i'll ever ask them yeah. because that's that's my job I don't want to make your head explode. I don't want to make you cry. And that's I the could, throttle. Yes. I could. Um, and I could I could tell you, I could give you some verbal diarrhea and tell you everything that's going on in my head and everything that could possibly go wrong, but you would run away. Yeah. And I don't blame you. Um, so Ver- my job to hold that back and, and just re- like, uh, yeah, chestnut checkers. Yeah. So verbal diarrhea. Yes. We were talking about efficiencies within a company and we just did a full building cycle. <laughs> 
This is what happens when we have a five what minute was phone question? call. And then we go, it, it was about oh, how on. you're setting yourself apart with efficiencies and technology. Oh, we're on question, we're on question two. <laughs> good, good. There's eight more questions. <laughs> Shit. But no, this is what Theo and I do, man. And it's awesome. Like I, I think everyone's going to be engaged everyone and amazed. Stopped, everyone stopped listening. They're like, man. No, no. We're, too, we're too good looking. <laughs> Face for radio. Yeah, that's it. But no, like, so let's try to stay on top of this stuff. Okay, we'll but keep efficiencies. Go- we'll keep going. Yeah, like, but the but the apps you're bringing in, you're getting coached. Uh, I made you know a little pun about that. Yeah. You're getting coached. You're you're you ask me questions about what I'm doing because you want to learn. I think that's a key facet that builders have to realize. You can't just swing a hammer. So, w- what implicate like the zip system and all this other totally. stuff, like. Go into that okay. a little bit. Yeah. So, so again, I uh, I live on that. You know, if you're not getting uh, better, you're getting worse. And so, so bringing in, you talked earlier about bringing in some systems, having some stuff that sets you apart, constantly learning, constantly changing. The building code is the sl- the longest and slowest thing to change, but uh, but that doesn't mean there's not new technologies that are out there and available. So uh, one of those is a is a product and a program by Huberwood called the Zip System, and it's basically an integrated uh, structural panel panel with your WRB, which is your water resistant barrier. It's, yep. your, it's your Tyvek. It's your, it's your outer Tyvek. It's your Gore-Tex jacket that goes on your structure. And then due to code needing, um, what's the interior, uh, our requirement for, uh, for exterior. So they've built that into the panel itself. And so instead of installing three different products, your Tyvek, your sheeting and your, and your ISO board, uh, they've just put that all into one. And so saying I've, that lightly, Paying for three products to be placed on. No. Paying for two tradesmen yes. to mount said continuous insulation, the yeah. R5 rigid board on. Yeah. Said two people to come back, ladders, scaffolding, whatever, yep. to put on the OSB sheeting. Yep. And then two more laborers to yep. come back and put on three t- the waterproof. Three times around the house instead exactly. of once. But with, like I always tell people, you know, the two most expensive things with builders. Making carpenters think. That's why every one of my plans, I don't know if you've noticed yet, are to either the foot or the six inch. Right. I'm never going to build a house that's 23 foot, one and five eighths. Yeah, barf. Like, take the one and five eighths away. You're never going to notice that I took one and five eighths inches away from yeah. your living space. Yeah. That's number one. Never make a car- carpenter think because that costs you money. Number two, labor. Yeah. Materials are expensive enough. Yeah. Don't pay labor three times. Yeah, these yeah, guys so these, have a system that's just insane. So, so with their with their rollout again, it comes in varying thicknesses depending on what you're trying to achieve as far as an envelope. Yeah, I think they go up to the R10, eh? Uh, yeah, R12.6, a 12. two, two and a half. It's yeah. pretty intense. It's it's a pretty a pretty good system. So and everything so, residential then. There's no residential over twelve. So that yeah. covers everything residentially. Yeah. So, so with this panel, we'd put it on. So this is this is we're pushing this to be our default. Yeah. This is going to become. Yeah. Our, you called me about Charles. Street you know, on this it. is going to become our system. Uh, it's been ordered. It's going on our next project. Uh, and I didn't give the client a choice because by the time that we buy plywood, and then and <laughs> then uh, you know, which we won't talk about. Uh, but you know, by the time we buy that at the cost, and then buy this How board much is that at a the sheet? cost, this stuff right now is about a hundred and five a sheet. At, so at you're half inch. so I mean I don't care what so you say again, we won't talk about it later. One hundred and five dollars a sheet gets waterproofing and rigid, for, and structural and structural in one shot. Where right now you're paying a hundred dollars and fifty eight cents for just the plywood. That's for three quarters. So yeah, half. No, inch but I'm just right. saying yeah, totally. But this is for half inch. So you're maybe at seventy. Maybe you're I think at it's seventy eight dollars. Seventy. Yeah. Then your ISO board's about thirty. Yeah, we're there. But one labor. And uh, it's still see, three this times. is where people get it's into that tunnel times. vision, and they so it's like, well, it's, it's, yeah. more. and again, the Tyvek yeah. is whatever, hundred bucks a roll. You need two rolls, so it's not. It does not. That doesn't really come into the equation. But it's the one install. I had a guy and the argue. better install. You don't Way have this. To, you don't have this shit flapping in the it's breeze. Got, and it's got the tongue, right? Uh, this stuff is just butt joint, and then it gets taped. Oh, so okay. It, it gets taped, and the tape is expensive, um, but it goes on pretty quick. But it's uh, it's again what we're going for here. If yeah. you're trying to chase the dollar, guess what? There's it's nine labor. guys down the yeah. road that'll help you out there. We're not. Well, I have people argue with me about my system because we charge by the square foot, right? And they're always like, well, how's that fair to me? I say, if you want to go by the hour, say the word, brother. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. You want to pay a professional by the hour, pay them. Yeah. It's not going to be a win. Yeah. Yeah. It's (laughs) like- Put Theo on the clock with his eight people. Yeah. Versus the price he tendered for you. Yeah. You're going to lose. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's like so. So, so our jobs, uh, we give them a we give them a budget. We do charge by the hour, but yeah. what you but what we do is what you're getting for that 
But you're hour. estimating how many hours. 100%. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, we have a budget to hit. We have, you have we a have, throttle. We have a throttle that we have to maintain. And then when we and when they make a decision, so we, again, people call it the cost plus model, time and material, yeah. whatever it is. But then that's, that's, that's more work because we have to track all that information. If I gave you a fixed price, if I told you 10 grand for a deck, you'd go, great. You wouldn't care if it takes me a day or three weeks. Um, if I give you a budget on a deck, I I don't need to. Usually, I can yeah. price that to the to the to the penny. Um, but on a remodel, and again, focusing on the remodel world, I ain't fixed pricing that in a million years. The contingencies I'd have to have, you'd make your head swim. So it's so I just have to give you, hey, I'm expecting to spend between forty and fifty on structural, uh, so on and so forth. And so that gives us the the leniency, the, the availability, and some things we save on. Some things, hey, structural only cost you thirty grand. Uh, so there's 10 grand left in your pocket, which you put back in your pocket. You can put towards heated floors, whatever you want. So it's a revolving door. Of, oh, that's of, cool. So of you tracking. give them that opportunity. Oh, so if you have a budget that's 100 grand on a renovation mm -hmm. and you, you, know, you can see that you're at that drywall stage, let's say, mm -hmm. and you can see that you're light, mm -hmm. that you've got, like you're spending 80. Yeah. So you have that meeting with the client to say, listen, we're 20 coming, grand under. We're coming in under. Or... I can still do this, this, or this. Yeah. If you want to spend a hundred, it goes the other way around. We're at eighty, and we're not at drywall yet. And I sh and I give them three options of how to save twenty. Right. Grand because we're going to hit twenty. We're going to hit a uh, hundred and twenty grand. And I say we can swap out your tile floors for laminate for yeah. now, which they can always be replaced later. Here's all the things you can. We can put hollow core doors on and switch them out for solid later. These are all options of how to put twenty grand because I can't fix the structural, I can't change the insulation, and I can't change drywall. We can swap out floors, we can swap out countertops, we can swap out lighting, all the things, and I show them how to put money in back in their pocket and say so either yeah, twenty grand, do. twenty grand more goes into the pot for the project, or you. Pull back on some of the selections that can be done at a later date. Yeah, like we, we do don't that. need to put in the fireplace. Yeah. The fireplace can sit there stubbed out. All the rough gas, ins, everything. All rough ins. You don't need to go gas range. You could go a GE. Yeah. You could go an off the shelf white model, and 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 you can do those later. And ten times out of ten, they say, carry on. We'll put more money in the budget. Yeah, it's key. I get people to that's in remodels. That. That's yeah, not again. Well, that's not a new. That's not a new construction. New construction that happens too because you got to look at the fact. Like I use a lot of analogies when I'm talking to clients, and I, I imagine you do too. Is like I meet somebody and they've got this. You know, let's say a one and a two year old and a puppy. You know, we want to spend like thirty dollars a square foot on flooring. No, you don't. Right. Wait until they move you. out, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Yeah, and this yeah. is why. And then I'm like, go home and look at your floor. Like the, oh. move your couch, look at where the dog hasn't been and the kids yeah. haven't been and the yeah. Legos and the trucks and the yeah. cars and then look at the floor that has. Yeah. And uh, you want to spend 6% uh, of your budget on that? Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Remodel later. I highly, I highly recommend yeah. you. No, that's cool, yeah. man. No, that's it's, for sure. Yeah. So, and then, I mean, we're coming up on, you know, time wise, but it's, you know, like you, you want to talk about like, so we've covered transparency and client, you know, cost effectiveness, but you I know, can... what smart tech are you recommending builders clean up their, and not even clean up their act, just open I mean, you your can, eyes you to that. smart enough. Because I'm <laughs> so, the same way. Tech makes life easy. Yeah, so we're so we talked about your systems. We talked about yeah. your filing system, your 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 systematization of you guys being able to follow through. Stuff. Well, again, it's undiagnosed OCD. Yeah, it's very <laughs> good and very easy and almost more accepted in an office space. Because yeah, how do you this, do that at the back because, of the truck? Because y'all can't see what I'm looking at, but it's a very clean, polished, sexy. sharp, sexy, there yeah. I said it, place. Uh, hanging pictures, hanging whiteboards. This place yeah. is sharp. Yeah. How, that is not some, That is not words you use on a job, in the, site. In, on a job site. In the construction industry, it's unheard of. It's messy. Uh, yeah. Sorry, there's bottles of piss in the corner. Like uh, this, is just, this is just the industry. It seems to be that that's what everyone is just like, well, this is okay. There once was a time when plumbers showed up to work wearing a tie. Yep. They, were, they carried a briefcase. There was a time where they gave a shit. There was a time where uniforms were a thing. So, so I feel like it's my duty, my job to, to, to bring that back to the table of, of, of systems, of uniform, of rules, regulations, policies, having that stuff built into a job because a client um, has just, everyone's just okay with just, you know, guys hacking darts with holes they in do. Their, They do. They expect you to show their, up smoking with your ass like, hanging out. Ass hanging out, yeah. uh, rusty vehicles, holes in the pants. It happens every day. Yeah. Um, so with our guys, again, I'm not saying they're clean shaven, but that proverbial clean shaven look of, of guys that just, that just care on the back end is 
backed by by systems. So we have a CRM, a client relations management system software that we use called Builder Trend. And this is a paid by the month, really expensive software that really makes us great. And this software allows me to import all of our leads and all of our clients, all of our requests for work forms all get dumped into this. And I have a, a funnel system where I'm tracking all our leads and tracking uh, the communications back and forth with the client, what they've chosen so far. And then that can get turned into a job, which gets turned into a Gantt chart, which gets allocated to all the sub trades that are involved, the three or four guys that are involved. Every single line item has been delineated by how long it will take us to perform, which can get stretched or shrunk as as it goes yeah so the, for old builders that's like the old flow charts yes the, so the it's, it's a flow chart it's a you know we have critical path aligned as to what uh what project or what a task gets hung up by another project what a lot of people don't understand is that if you push back one guy by a day yep. it doesn't pro doesn't push the program doesn't push the project back by a day it can push it back by a week so i push my kitchen guy off by a day let's say i push him off by two days well the next time that they can template the countertops is three weeks from now I always say so it's a butterfly getting hit by a tornado. Right. You hear the butterfly effect and you expect that little wave. No, the building industry, when a butterfly flaps its wing, a fucking hurricane hits the building it's, site. It's not like, well, we, you know, yeah. we, we, those we plumbers don't... aren't only working for you. Yes, they disappear yes. to six weeks of yes. contracted work that push, didn't have a headache. Push them off by a day. We have it happen all the time. Spray foam guys say, hey, we got to hang up. Our truck is down. Uh, can I push you back till Friday? No, it's I'll Tuesday. come get you. And I, I will tow. I will tow the machine. I will spray yeah. it myself with the little because, Mitsubishi. Because, Here I come. Because I've got in my head, uh, in my head, I know. I look at that Gantt chart and I see that spray foam is supposed to be two days. Yeah. Boarding starts Friday. And it's only a day to finish the kitchen because mudding starts Monday because painting is in a week. You push that one guy back three days, that just, fucks the entire schedule, yeah. and my client can't move in. By the way, their move-in date's the 25th of May. They have to move out of their house because some new tenants moving in June, June 1st. Yeah, oh, it it's just like, it's ripples just, right it's through. It's wickedly awful how, how uh, and it's our job to stay on top of that. This software keeps us there, keeps us in check. It allows us to track those overages and underages. Uh, underages? Uh, is and there a such a thing? Is there? It is now. It is now. Uh, so, so it's it's really good. And then and then to back that is our is our data tracking for our material costs and 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 giving a client that over under of, of where material is landing on their budget. And then and then we use um, a program called T Sheets, which has now been consumed yep. by QuickBooks. It's called QuickBooks Time. And the guys have an app in their phone and they track their time to the fifteen minute interval with a full uh, task that they've which assigned is key. it to. A lot of people overlook that yeah. tracking of time. So, uh, so every single I've just guy, started tracking my time in seven years as Anvil Designs. It, yeah. Just started tracking mine. I've always tracked everyone else's. Sure. But now I'm tracking mine. Yeah. Yeah. I it's, built a... I'm, I'm old school again. I don't, hey, I don't have the apps, but, the but fact I that build you're doing my it, app. The fact that you're doing yeah. it is, is huge. And so we use that. So we've only been challenged. We pay again by the month, by the guy. But we've been challenged maybe twice on a guy's location and his time spent on something. And I was able to go back three months and all show communication, all, all, all digital. I was like, yeah, yeah, October 13th, here he was. And actually, here's his GPS coordinates, and here's where he was, and he was there from 8 to 4. And I think, What's your question? I think any builder listening and, and saying, well, Theo's nuts, he's just young and bases on technology, he's wasting this money on that. Think about how many arguments you've had with clients over billing. And this makes, guy just hits Control P, prints out the report, and it's like, no, it's here. Information is power. And yeah, having that information, it is. having that data, having that having that data driven um, from the guys, um, they also have uh, an option of unbillable. They also have an option to bill me, bill the company for non-billable stuff. So if they're working on the trailer, if they're organizing the trailer, they're building shelves, they're working at the shop, all that stuff. Yeah, I regular track. maintenance. And then I and I actually go back and I have admin time, maintenance. Um, but again, uh, that's training. Key to, how much is that truck costing you? Right. You can't say, I can, well, I paid for an oil change. No, dude. How many times did your labor guy have to take a cab or walk yeah. for two hours to get a gas can? Yeah. Like, you have to know that cost. Yeah, so I can I can back cost. I can pull up a report from any person, any time frame I want, from a whole year to quarterly to any guy and anyone that's ever worked for us in any time frame for the last three years, pull up a report and then get averages of and I can back cost my my unbillable time into my billable time. So the average person works nineteen hundred and four hours. That's your twenty yep. eighty hours minus your two weeks vacation and all your stat pays and shit like that. So if you're on that Because everyone time, knows that off the cuff. Yeah. Well, you have to. Uh, and so so I can divide my 1904 into their unbillable time and yeah. figure out a billable ratio of how I need to cover my costs. Which, again, your hard costs. Yes. Yeah, the key, yeah, the, the costs, detriment, yeah. 
to your yeah. income yeah. is your cost. Yes. People overlook that all the time. And that's WSIB, uh, WSIB, CBP, EI, all that all stuff rolled in, all the 20, you know, the percentages of that, as well as any training, working at Heights, anything that I send these guys off to, um, all their, yeah, all their downtime, all their sick time, all of that's tracked. So full circle back, because I'm impressed again. So full circle back. So I've been interviewing people now um, for two months. I've been doing the approved professionals for about three years, magnitude of small businesses. And I'm, I'm starting to build my own data about the human race. So people like us that are low confidence, right? And just kind of go-getters that are just making their own ship, yes. right? See if I'm right or wrong because it's right with me. As much as you've got the CRM, like the management software and everything else, how good's your memory? Uh, depends on what. No, like do you need it? Do you depend on the management software or can you track all your clients in your head right now? Oh, I can tell you every. Yeah. Job Did you know that most every... people that I interview, the, the low confidence guys are the ones like same with me. Uh, my wife, she listens and you, I can, I get 60 phone calls a day. I can change topics about every project without looking at any drawings. And I manage like since January one to April 20th, we've done 149 homes. Yeah, you said you have like 40 clients on the go. At 70, any given... 70, 72, oh, 40 is the up. threshold, but yeah. because of COVID it's been up in the yeah. And 60s that's still have 70s. on the go. On the go. I at can, any given time. They can all call and they can yes, all, but, but it's a trait but in don't low ask confidence me, people. But don't ask me what I had for dinner last night. Exactly. And don't ask me what my wife told me. I can't forget to yeah. bring home. Oh yeah. I I'll get home and I'll have to come I back to the grocery store. I cannot remember that. But I will tell you how much my last yeah. client's bill was. I can tell you how how yeah. many hours the guys worked, what payroll was the other day. But in the great but chimpanzee <laughs> study of humankind, totally. it's a trait I'm finding out. It's crazy. Look at you. You know when like a psychology podcast next? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. People might think we need a psychologist after this podcast because we Both talked about nothing we wanted to talk about. No. Um, but it is well, true. I'm this, seeing right? it. We yeah, we can edit speed it. Speed it up. At the end of this, the people like, we have an IQ of. <laughs> ding, and ding, it's, just, ding, ding. it's just a different voice comes in. Yes. You're a genius. Uh, <laughs> the, is there anything? What, uh, I, I do want to touch on break even. Do it. Shit. Go. I don't know how much. Uh, we can go as long as we desire, what man. It's is a, it? Uh, 11.38. Oh, we're fine. We're good. Um, so the only thing I wanted to touch on, again, looping back to when I started talking about the baker and how the baker yes. uh, has no right running a business. He could be. He could be a good business owner. Um, but but going back to that is I've, I've, I'm seeing that pattern of a lot of carpenters that run businesses or, or, or business owners that then get, get into it. And it's like I'm seeing far more of the pattern of if, if that carpenter was adaptable enough to learn – uh, a bit about business then he'll do well but if they just keep that you know you know i'm a good carpenter and and, and i charge 75 bucks an hour and, and, and that's my all invoices I need. are paid and then and everything is good what we've what we've realized is breaking into uh i mean you mentioned it about having a business coach and we've got we've hired one for the year to 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 slap our wrists and and sort of yep. show us open our eyes as it be to some of the um, unforeseen uh, expenses that can creep up or that don't get considered when growing. Yeah. So once upon a time, again, referencing back to Windsor Drive, we had very low overhead. So we could charge very little. We had a low hourly rate and, and costs were covered and life was good. Um, but then you start to grow and you get your second vehicle, you get your office space, you start paying for a CRM, you start paying for an office admin. So you realize that these costs creep up, but then you never really up your rates. You just kind of like up them a little bit and like that should cover it. And that's the death of a lot of businesses. You talk about new builds, maybe that's what happened to them. Who knows? Can't speak to that. But what I do know is that if you really delve into that and you and you enjoy the numbers, and again, I enjoy the numbers. I do too. That's 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 just me. I like the numbers. Um, and and your break even, your break even cost, your break even margin, a margin being portion of your monthly revenue that goes to your fixed costs. So your break even margin has to be on point. Has to be to the penny. You have to know what every guy, every piece of for you, maybe stationary. For me, maybe yeah. hammer, nail, measuring tape, whatever it is. I need to know that every piece of fuel and wear and tear on the tires and 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 rollover of replacement of tools, I, I can't just be buying tools with profit. I've got to be using my look at my. You well, know, there won't be any profit, right? Uh, I think the government says your your tools and equipment are useless to them after three years. Yep. Your three year depreciation. So I'll take eighty thousand dollars worth of tools and divide it by three years, amortize it by over the hour, and roll that into the cost of a guy. But it's also like straight from the government. The my personal opinion, the biggest dummies at running a business. Three years, guys. 
Every three years, your business should be able to buy new tools. Yeah. That's all they're telling you. They're mm-hmm. not telling you tools wear out in three years. Right. They're telling well, you yeah. an effective working right. business that's progressive should be buying new tools. I don't know why highway th- uh, why highway uh, uh, maintenance and bridge maintenance cost so much. Is because you know Tackerberry or anybody that's yeah. building uh, uh, Palmer Low, any of those big builders, uh, they'll they'll buy an excavator for yeah. a job for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars and tap amort- it into and it, amortize that shit for three. Yeah. years and they need and if a bridge construction actually takes two so part of the construction costs are and and how long is that is thing they're gonna kill how long does that thing last yeah probably 20 yeah. that thing will last a long time a lee bear uh you know whatever you whatever you have a cat will last that long but you're amortizing that over three years because that's what we're told to yeah. do agree with it or not um my well, tool, so my, tool, have to my, pay my tools might last me five but that's that's for me and that's my maintenance some tools last fucking six months yeah. some tools get dropped off scaffolding and broken on on site so so rolling those unforeseeables or, or you know or predictables into it so so all of our hammer drills concrete saws impacts we got expensive finishing tools we've got some fest tool gear um some stuff that's really really top end and that needs to be rolled into our Costs and those need to be replaced and not just out of what. Well, not only replaced, just at a necessity. I mean, it's called a rock drill for a reason. You're drilling through rock. Yeah, it's gonna break. Yeah, and even like you say, Tackerberry and all these big guys with the uh, with the hammer bits. Mm -hmm. I mean, our prices are higher. I hear people all the time. They're like, "Oh, well, my buddy works up in, I don't know, let's say north of here," and he's like, "Well, he's telling me excavation is this much," and I'm like, "Yeah, is he off the shield? Like, is he off the Canadian shield?" They're expecting to hit real rock here. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, we're not we're not yes. digging into ice or, yes. or sand. Yes. It's freaking pink so Canadian watching, shield. Watching some of the watching some of the builders in the states running their twelve inch yeah. uh, twelve inch augers drilling straight into sand down six feet. Okay, so we're pouring holes. We drilled all these holes, drilled twenty four holes in three hours. You're like, you did what? I drilled down six inches. I hit a I hit a bowl yeah. and my auger stops and throws. We're watching me. a renovation show. My wife was like, What do you mean they're putting they put thirty piles? Which for piles, people don't realize. Four hours. But they put 30 piles under a swimming pool. And she's like, why are they doing that? And I was like, because this is California. Right. And there's and, nothing uh, underneath. There's them. nothing under. And when a tsunami or a hurricane come in, it takes it all. Yeah. They're so on, they're, they're, they're on pouring 30 feet foot of sand. 30 foot deep. Well, yes. the ocean's underneath yeah. it. Yeah. yeah right. Amazing. They're pouring 30 foot deep concrete piles to hold up a swimming pool next to a body of water. Yes. Yeah, every uh, first world problems. Yeah, that, that is that is the definition. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's interesting um, again to to roll those numbers. They need to anything swimming pool guys, pile guys, congregate anything. It applies to everybody. It applies to you. It need that to Anybody owning a business, and I think that that's overseen far too often. That was something that my sort of eyes were open to, and and having a break even calculator and having a labor burden calculator, knowing what you need to charge per guy just to break even is shockingly higher than you think it is um again you can anyone knows to roll in your extra you know 20 percent or 25 percent for cppei and deductions but it's like there's actually a whole no, there's actually like another roughly depending on the business anywhere between 20 and 30 percent added on top of that just to cover stuff and that's and that's forgotten all too well but we can no longer we can't operate profitably at a 55 dollar an hour uh rate that doesn't cover the bills it actually doesn't cover the bills which is crazy because once upon a time i was like oh like 45 an hour like i want to be like a cheap guy and it's like that i would be bankrupt and, uh, and, you know, and people don't, i tell people don't so that. one of the i do a lot of mentoring and talks with small businesses and a lot of times when i'm talking business is very general it doesn't matter if it's our industry where it's construction or if it's hair salons or what have you and and you've gotten to know me with the professionals that i, I mentor all facets mm-hmm. but it's a very simple analogy that i normally start with and it's think about evolution in your business if you're not evolving you're dying right if we'd never evolved we'd still be a bunch of chimpanzees some still are, they say. Well, they agreed, but think about that. Everything is evolution. And I want, you know, the internet is everything. We're wrapping up this podcast, but evolution is everything. And, you know, the internet's going to hold this episode forever. Forever. Ter- terrifying. Terrifying. Wallace, look to your old man right uh, now and ask him if he has evolved since hey, this podcast. Hey, kid. Yeah. Yeah, don't be a builder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't do don't what I Don't build new did. homes. Don't build new homes. Dave but said. no, I'm serious. Wallace is going to look and search your name and yeah. find this down the road. Awful. And when she comes back and looks at this, 
you're going to go and so you you mentioned my first home that yeah. I designed. Yeah. It, I've I've stricken it from the internet. I've deleted it from everything yeah, possible because it's, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's embarrassing. They shouldn't have hired me. Yeah, what were they thinking? Right? But I that's, sh- I that's sh- called that's called evolution. I have it I have the original vellum yeah. in a tube at my house and I showed my son is second generation architecture and I showed it to him and he laughed. And you're like, yeah. I was like, that was my first paying. That paid for your life. Yeah, exactly. So Wallace is going to find this yeah. and go back. And she's, I want, I want to hear. That podcast this is where it all began. But I want to hear the evolution from totally. here. You, you should, and this is not in error, you should look at this podcast in, let's say, five years. Right. This is a benchmark. I didn't know a fucking thing. Yeah. And I look back three years and I think, that I, I don't. You I have still, to though. I but if you don't, seriously. you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. 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 Awesome, man. I this appreciate is, you coming in. Yeah, well, we can we six can do more it. months. Six more months. Come six back. months. We're doing it again. See uh, how we did. We'll riddle everyone. So again, Theo's here with me from Songwood Contracting. Thanks, brother. Um, yeah, we'll do it again. This is good. T- good stuff. All right, thanks, Dave. Get in touch with Theo at Songwood Contracting at Theo at SongwoodContracting dot ca six one three five three nine three nine seven eight and Songwood Contracting dot ca. For more information, visit www dot ont approved dot ca. The Pros Talk is an Ontario approved professionals production. Special thanks to DCE Media Productions. DCE Media Productions dot ca.